Greetings to all peoples and kingdoms of Ada, and welcome to Shield Maiden of Ada. One of the delights of Tolkien fans is to dig deeply into his walks and discover the hidden meanings that lie within his characters, scenes, and settings. The Eight Gifts of Galadriel is one such scene that feels mysteriously lurking with meaning. Today, we'll try to uncover some of the meaning of this scene and see if the mystery might dissolve into beautiful, insightful discoveries. So sit back and let this shield maiden be your guide into the wonderful world of Middle-earth. After spending a month in the elven realm of Lothlorien, the Fellowship prepares to continue on their journey. The elves bestow upon them useful gifts, cloaks, woven by the hand of the Lady Galadriel herself, which will shield them from unfriendly eyes, and clasp with elven brooches shaped as leaves. The waybread, Limbus, of which a single bite will fill the stomach of a grown man, elven rope, slender and strong, and made from Hithlan, a strong fiber from the inner bark of the Milan trees. They are also gifted boats. This is a relief to Aragorn, on whom the entire leadership has fallen after Gandalf's death. With boats, they can travel to Anduin, and he will have some more time to come to a final decision regarding the ultimate direction of their journey. In these gifts of the Galadrim, we can see several themes arise. The simple, basic needs of the Fellowship are forced to be met. Food, protection, the means to continue their quest. There is also a foreshadowing of the radical way in which friendships and alliances are changing. Both the cloaks and the limbus bread are gifts not lightly given. As the elves themselves say, never before have we clad strangers in the garb of our own people. The recipe for the limbus bread was one cup closely guarded, and custom mandated that only an elven queen should keep and distribute the limbus. Therefore, in the gifting of both these things to the fellowship, it is as if the elves are preparing themselves and their gust for days when peace will be restored and friendships unheard of forged. When Dorf and Elf will walk together, when kingdoms and cities will walk in trade more than in war. The wisdom of the Lady Galadriel may have yet seen that those days will not fall off. The Fellowship left the immediate realm of Lothlorien, but they were met further down the river by Galadriel, Colorborn, and some of the people. They were invited to a feast. And afterwards, Galadriel herself bestowed upon each of them gifts. There have been several attempts to analyze these gifts and what they might signify. Some see them as purely practical, others have matched the gifts of virtue, such as hope, bravery, or valor. Father Anthony Ferguson, in his Catholic lecture series, Middle Earth and the Seven Sacraments, sees in the gifts of Galadriel a powerful connection to the Sacrament of Confirmation. In his own words, like confirmation, they receive these gifts as they prepare to go on mission and receive their individual vocations within the larger War of the Ring. Father Ferguson points out how each person's gifts were matched exactly to what they would need in the future, not only in the course of the war, but, as in Sam's case, the aftermath. In the course of my research for this video, I have discovered several interesting points relating to Galadriel's gifts and their significance that I would like to share. Feel free to share your own thoughts in the comments. Aragorn's gift was a sheath for his sword, Andrew. Galadriel also gave him the Elisar, the Elf Stone, and with it, she bestowed upon him the name of Elisar. As leader of the Fellowship and Gondor's soon to be king, this was almost an anointing, a knighting, by the great Elven Queen to the heir of the great kings of Od. Names have been seen throughout history as incredibly powerful indications of a person's identity and essence. Thereby, in gifting Aragorn with the name Elisar, Galadriel seemed to be solidifying his identity and position. There was also a beautiful trilogy of virtues that are echoed in the gift of the Elf Stone, a reminder of Arwen's love, Aragorn's hope, and the faith of them both towards each other. Boromir was given a golden belt. In medieval times, Belts were seen as symbols of nobility and authority, so perhaps Galadriel had in mind Bormir's position as son to the steward of Gondor, or of his later, valent deeds in defending and ultimately dying for the hobbits Merry and Pippin. But there might be another meaning here, a more subtle one. Belts have also been seen as symbolizing purity, protection, a guarding of ourselves against ourselves. Perhaps Galadriel's gift was a warning to Bormir. 
an elusive note of caution to the man, to resist the law of the wind and the demands of his own heart. In the case of Marion Pippin, the silver belts that they were given are almost certainly a tribute to their future wars as knights of Rohan and Gondor, respectively. Throughout the tale, Mary and Pippin change and grow from playful, careless hobbits into mature persons of rank and responsibility. The silver bells gifted by Galadriel perhaps helped the young minds to prepare for the thought that something of importance lay ahead on the journey's path. Legless was given a seemingly simple gift. To Legless, she gave a bow such as a Galadriel used. The bow was longer and stouter than the bows of Mokwood, and it was strung with a string of elf hair. A quiver of arrows was also given, and they both proved very useful indeed, for Legless brought down a fell beast with it later on the journey. But perhaps there was more than practicality here. The elves of Mokwood and the elves of Lothlorien were somewhat estranged in their relationship. The king of the woodland realm was fiercely independent, and tensions existed regarding certain rights. In giving Legless such a beautifully crafted gift, Galadriel is acknowledging her fellow elves' worth and abilities. Once again, there was perhaps a hint of a dawn of new friendships and a renewal of old ones. For you, little god known lover of trees, she said to Sam, I have only a small gift. She put into his hand a little box of plain grey wood, unadorned save for a single silver wound upon the lid. Here was such G for Galadriel, she said, but also I may stand for garden in your tongue. In this box there was earth for my orchard, and such blessing as Galadriel has still to bestow with upon it. It will not keep you on your road, nor defend you against any peril, but if you keep it and see your home again at last, then perhaps it may reward you. Though you should find all barren and laid waste, there will be few gardens in Middle Earth that will bloom like your garden, if you sprinkle this earth there. Then you may remember Galadriel, and catch a glimpse far off of Lorien. Sam went red to the ears and muttered something inaudible as he clutched the box and bowed as well as he could. Galadriel's voice to Sam must be word and heard in their entirety to appreciate their gentle beauty and tender blessing. It is wonderful how Galadriel, great elven queen as she is, can speak to the heir of Isodor and all his nobility and heritage, and then turn to the humble, simple gardener of the Shire and hand him a little box of earth and bestow upon him such words to make him blush to his hobbit ears. In a moment of desperation, after seeing into the depth of Galadriel's mirror, Sam was tempted to turn back and forsake the quest. In the end, however, he chose to stay with Frodo, and Galadriel's gift seems a reward for his bravery and loyalty. And when Sam does use the gift in later times, it serves to bring hope and beauty not only to him, but also to the whole of the Shire. A fitting gift for one so selfless, so kind and giving. Galadriel's gift to Gimli is one of the most well-known and meaningful. She asked the dwarf what he wished from her, and Gimli replied that to simply look upon the Lady of Lothlorien and heal her words was enough. Galadriel was astonished at his unselfish and gracious words, and she pressed again as to something that the dwarf might wish from her. Gimli finally replied that if she insisted, he would ask for nothing but a single strand of her golden hair. She gave him three. What is the significance of this seemingly strange gift? To understand the full and rich meaning of it, we must go back to the First Age, when Galadriel drove in Valinor. Her uncle, one of the most powerful elves of the First Age, drove there also, Fanor, son of Fenway. He, too, saw her beauty and repeatedly asked her for a strand of her golden hair, for it was held and marvel and matched. It was golden like the hair of her father and of her former for Indus, but richer and more radiant, for its gold was touched by some memory of the star-like silver of her mother, and the Eldar said that the light of the two trees had been snared in her tresses. Perhaps this was what gave Fanor the idea for the Simuels. Something to hold and keep the glorious light of the twin trees of Valinor. Three times he asked Galadriel for a single strand, but she refused him each time. No doubt she saw his eagle grasping heart and the burning anger that awarded him. Perhaps, too, she felt that his advances were more than a request for her hair. Whatever the case, Fanor never received a single strand of hair from Galadriel. Therefore, for Galadriel to give Gimli not one, but three strands of her hair, 
was an act of incredible trust and a silent statement of her understanding of Gimli's heart. The elves themselves marvel at her actions. Galadriel's gift to Gimli can also be seen as another declaration of the new friendships that Middle-earth was seen. Three times now, she has shown herself willing to break with age-long convention and extend kindness to those whom the elves of Lothlorien, and in some cases, elves in general, would not dream of fostering a friendship with. Her gift to Gimli could not be clearer to those who saw her give to Dorf three strands of her golden hair. Middle-earth was seen a new age, and she intended to be a part of it. For Gimli's part, he promised to have her gift set in crystal as an heirloom of my house and a pledge of goodwill between the mountain and the wood until the end of days. Galadriel bestowed upon him the gift and her blessing. And then, at last, she comes to Frodo. And you, Wien Bell, she said, turning to Frodo, I come to you last, who are not last in my thoughts. For you I have prepared this. She held up a small crystal file. It glittered as she moved it, and rays of white light sprang from her hand. In this vial, she said, is caught the light of Yarendil's star, set amid the waters of my fountain. It will shine still brighter when night is about you. May it be a light to you in dark places, when all other lights go out. Only Tolkien could have caught such beauty and hope and inspiration in a single paragraph. Only Tolkien could have made us read such words and feel a lump in our throat at the thought of this fragile vial of light, joining with this young, brave hobbit into the darkness of mortal. And only Tolkien could have brought such a gift to his beautiful, triumphant clothes when Frodo stands amid the holes of Shelob's lair and brandishes the gleaming light as he cries out. <laughs> the fellowship has been anointed and prepared. The real journey will begin. The real trials are ahead of them. The pangs of loneliness, despair, and desperation are only ahead, not behind. But with Galadriel's voice echoing in song of farewell, and faith, hope, and love deep in their hearts, the Fellowship sets forth to meet those trials as only Tolkien could make them meet them, with courage. Thank you for joining with me today, the Award of Otto. Please like this video, subscribe to Shield Maidens, and join us again so we can explore more of Middle-earth together. Namadi.